All right, welcome to today's lecture, which is the Indiana State Laws. This section is a tough section. There is a lot of information we will cover in the next couple of courses. For those of you at home, there are no slides. Check with the handouts or you're going to be staring at the same slide the whole time. All right. For you guys here, you're going to be looking at the handout and staring at the same slide as well. All right. Because there is no slide handouts per se. What I have done and that you have before you are the Indiana state laws, which are 212 pages of state laws, that I have taken the liberty of reducing to the important things that I know is on the exam. So a lot of times they tell you guys to highlight stuff in your book or something like that. Don't highlight this information because this is the highlighted information. Otherwise, you'll end up highlighting every sentence, okay? Now, you might want to highlight a word or two every once in a while, but this is the highlight of a 212-page state law book. And if anybody's ever seen the Code of Federal Regulation, you know, it's two columns about real small print, and I didn't want to give that to you. The other thing is, these are all, you can find these on the state's website. But they all have code numbers. Once again, if you're familiar with the Code of Federal Regulations, it's like 278 IAC 13-4-1-6. You are not going to be required to memorize any of those numbers. So I have removed all of those for you for a confusion factor. There is no question that's going to say what is 876-7-4 say. Okay? So I have removed all the numbers as well. I've tried to make this more like a Word document outline as possible. If you want the real laws, you can go to the Indiana Real Estate Commission's website and search under rules and regulations and print all 212 pages out if you'd like. And you will go over all kinds of weird stuff that is really not necessary for the course. This is the necessary stuff. Now. The other part about this that I will tell you it's hard, 90% of the questions they're going to ask you are going to be application questions, not memorization. Once again, it's not going to ask you what does this mean and you have to pick out the definition. The question is going to be why can't Johnny take a commission from Bill? And you're going to have to know, oh, because a real, an agent can only take commission from their managing broker, because that's the law. So you're going to have to know the law and be able to apply it, all right? Before we go any further, let's get started. Let me show you how this works. There is a professional licensing association commission at the state level of Indiana. Anybody in here have a bartender's license? or a, a hair cutter's license. You've got the little blue card and the one that goes up on your wall. Ours look exactly the same because we are all a subgroup of the professional licenses. Accountants, architects, engineers, private detectives, real estate agents, home inspectors, appraisers. They are all subgroups under the professional licensing. So we all have the same look and feel with our card. And if you don't have one, and you've ever gone to a barber to get your hair cut, and you know they got the wall on the, it's called the wall card, that's on their wall usually, so it gives their name and shows their license number. We have those too, okay? They'll have a pocket card that you can carry with you that you keep in your wallet in case anybody ever challenges you to say, hey, are you really an agent? You can whip the pop pocket card out and show them, all right? Now, I will also tell you that the Real Estate Commission has a little more advanced than some of the others because currently, to save money, they don't print out the cards anymore. The Real Estate Commission now allows us to use the connection to the Internet as proof. And most of us have smartphones that can get on the Internet. If you don't have a smartphone that can access the Internet, you probably need to rethink your career choice right now or upgrade. Because now if you're challenged, you literally can pull out your iPhone, go on Safari, go on the IPL, put your name in the license shirts. It'll pop up with your name and license number, and you can just show it to them. That's legal for us. 
Barbers still have to display their, we used to have to do that. When I first started, all of our agents had their wall cards, you know, on the wall, and it was real impressive that, you know, you could go in there and see 47 picture frames with license. We don't have to do that now. Now the access to the internet allows us to verify that Raymond is licensed, here's his license number, and things like that, okay? So the Professional Licensing Association has overarching rules that apply to all subgroups. Then each subgroup has rules as well. So some of these rules you're going to see today may be redundant, or you think, hey, we already talked about that, because one may be the PLA rule that deals with all licensees, and that's a word they use. They, they will, you will hear me call them a licensee. That's anybody with a license, barber, bartender, us. And some of them are going to say brokers. That's specifically for us, not necessarily for one of the other people. Are we good? So <clears throat> think of it like that. There's the PLA, and then there's subcommittees under each one of the PLAs. The major subcommittee that we are going to talk about today is called the Real Estate Commission. The Real Estate Commission. All right, here we go. What's the purpose and the makeup of the Real Estate Commission? The Indiana legislator has given sole permission to the IRC to promulgate rules and regulations that we have to deal with. The commission's primary purpose is to safeguard the public's interest. If you're ever in doubt on a question, always choose the answer that protects the public the most because that's their main objective, is to protect the public from unscrupulous activities or unscrupulous, unscrupulous, blah, 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 bad agents, okay? So their overarching goal is the safeguard of the public interest. They also have enforcement and disciplinary measures that they can apply to real estate brokers or agents should you violate one of these state, federal, or local laws. So that's their big thing, okay? Protect the public and punish you if you violate the rule. Notice in this word, it says, enforce and discipline. There is a word missing in there. What is the word that's missing in there? Police. They do not have police. You guys all understand the, what police do, right? All police do is take a person that is suspected of breaking a rule into a custody to safeguard the public and then bring them in front of a judge and the judge will determine if they're guilty, not the police. And that happens all the time when you see these new videos popping up. Well, I'm not guilty, I didn't do it. And what's the police say? I don't care. That's not my job. I, I'm a policeman. I bring you in in front of the judge who will discipline you. So there are no police in this industry. There is nobody that is randomly walking around going into a brokerage and going, hey, Tiffany, let me see your last four deals so we can see if you made a mistake. We do not have that. All right? You guys want to know who the police are? Look to your left and look to your right. We are a self-policing industry. It is up to us to file a violation charge or any kind of charge against another agent if you believe they are violating any of the rules and regulations. Do not look at it like tattletailing. Look at it like bettering our profession. Um, Who's the people that do all the rankings of, not J.D. Power, but doesn't matter at this point, huh? Better business. Not better business. I can't remember the, the anyway, the, the crux of the story is, where do they rank real estate professionals as far as trust? <coughs> Way down the line. Like 14th or 15th most trusted profession. Have you dealt with a realtor? 
<coughs> Why? Because people perceive us as being shady. I mean, I'm dealing right now with, I consult with a lot of small brokerage firms. I'm dealing right now with one side calling the other side shady and the first side calling the second side shady, what they're doing. What they're doing, I think, is bordering on a shady concept. And I've told them both, hey, if you think there's a problem, file a charge. Because the only way for us to get better or move the average up is to get rid of the bottom people, all right? So I have a personal vendetta against every unlicensed property management company I find. I report them. Not that I want to be a big meanie. I just want a level playing ground. If I have to go to school and get a license and continuing ed and keep buying my license to do a job and they're doing the same job and not paying, I'm upset. I either want my license to not have to have one or I have to pay or they better get a license. So I report every property manager that I find that's unlicensed. And you would be surprised how many property managers out there that think they don't need a license because I'm doing it for a friend or I had one guy tell me, oh, I'm not taking money for it. I asked him, I said, uh, Where'd you get your license at? What school did you go to? Oh, I'm not, I, didn't, I don't have a license. I'm like, how are you property managing because you need a license? And then you can see in his eyes he's backpedaling. He's like, oh, well, I just do it for friends and I really don't collect money for it. I'm like, oh, so you're breaking the law and you're stupid because you're not getting paid either. There was a guy several years ago when we had our property management was up and running. We kept getting a lot of clients come over from this property management company. So I started getting curious, so I looked him up and could not find a license. I, I searched diligently to see if this guy was licensed. Eventually, I filed a claim against him. Went to the commission, filed to fill out the forms and all this. I didn't know this guy from Adam. Couldn't pick him out. A Couple months later, I'm at Chicago Title Suite at the football game. And I'm standing in there, and the Chicago title rep goes, hey, I want you to meet so-and-so who owns so-and-so property management. And just as I go to shake his hand, I'm like, ah, oh, crap, that was him. So I shook his hand, I'm like, hey, how you doing? He's like, hey, I'm a property management company. And in the back of my head, I'm like, not for long. And he is actually now not in the business and not even in the state, as far as I know. All right? So we are the police. You must police yourself. The commission will enforce the rules. And they will discipline you, but there are no police, all right? The commission itself is made up of 12 members. Now, I will tell you, this section is the memorization section right here. There are 12 members that sit on the real estate commission. Nine of these commissioners are actually actively practicing real estate brokers that have been licensed for more than five years as a broker. There are nine of them. Picture the state like a tic-tac-toe board. How many squares on a tic-tac-toe board? Nine, all right? So, <clears throat> there is a real estate commissioner from each one of the nine sections of the state. So that leaves how many? There are nine brokers. There are three other people. These three other people are called at-large. What does at-large mean? means they can come from anywhere in the state. They are not determined to have to come from Section 4, Section 5, or Division 2. At large means w one time they could be from Richmond, the next time the, whoever they get could be from Mer uh, Merrillville, okay? So they are at large members. Of those three, two of them are what we call citizen members. A citizen member is a person who is not licensed in real estate. They represent the citizen's vote, the layperson's vote. They are supposed to capture the interest of people that aren't licensed. 
all right? And then the 12th member is also a real estate broker at large. He can come from anywhere he wants. So what you have are 12 members, nine brokers, one from each district, two citizen members, and then one more broker at large. So the trivia question for the day is, what's the most number of brokers that can come from a division? Two, right? Because there are nine divisions, one, each one of them has at least one, and then that at-large broker has to come from one of those nine somewhere. So one division actually may have two brokers coming from it. So there are 10 brokers that sit on the board, two citizen people. Yes. Still have the five-year minimum. Still must be a practicing broker for five-year minimum. I am the next at-large broker to be admitted to the commission. Here's my letter from the governor for a recommendation. I have applied for it. I have put in for it. I am now simply waiting on the at-large member that is there currently to die. <laughs> That's wrong. He's been there like 12 years, okay? So I've got my letter from the commissioner as a appointee to go in front of them and become one of the 12 commissioners. I don't think it's going to happen because I've had that letter now for about three and a half years. So they can hold that position for four years? They hold the position for four years and they are appointed by the governor. It's not an election. They are simply appointed for so usually what has happened is when their term is done, they literally just tell the governor, yeah, hey, I'll do another one. He was like, okay, I don't want to hassle with all this. Yeah, you want to do it again? Go ahead. And that's what's happened. The guy that's at large has been doing it now for three terms. All right? So I'm kind of in a position where I don't think I probably will get in because uh, oh, I think the youngest termed broker, this is on, he's on his second term. One of the guys has been there like five terms. He's sat on the commission like 20 years. So when that guy leaves, when they I'm supposed to be appointed as the next one. They don't promote within the It's not a promote, no. It's whoever ap applies and gets appointed. So you're wanting to be the 12th member? I'm wanting to be the at-large member, yes. It's for the money, okay. the power. Well, no, because I'm in this. Because Norm McLean is the guy for this division, and I like Norm. Norm's a good guy. He's been on it a long time. I want to be involved in the commission because I love this industry and I want to help guide its direction. Hence the education portion. All right. So I want to, would like to be on the board to help guide the board in their direction of. For instance, the new rule change that you guys are living through right now, that was started with the commission five years ago to change us from salesperson and broker to just a broker. That was a decision the board, had, the commission came up with because of some public input and perception of what a salesperson was. And they, were, they went through this whole program and designed it long before it got rolled out in 2014. Oh, I guess I could, but I would have to go through the process. This was a, I had to get a state representative to write a letter to the governor uh, recommending me for the position and then the governor appointing me to that position. I could go through that process if I wanted to go back and say, hey, I want the fifth district or the second district. I just chose that large because I thought, yeah, it's not easier, I don't know. I just, I know Norm and I figure he's going to be in it a while, all right? The two citizen members currently, I think one is a unemployed housemaker. What's the right politically correct term for that now? Homemaker, stay-at-home mom, and an architect, I think, or, 
are the two. The commission, none of the commissioners can hold a, an elected office. All right. Um, his name just escapes me. Who's the guy that owns the True Value Hardware right up here? Oh, uh, do it best. Huh? He's a state, and now he's a state representative. He's a licensed agent. The mayor of Martinsville used to, uh, used to be the mayor, he's not now, also was a licensed agent. They cannot be on the commission because they have ulterior or could potentially have ulterior motives on how to vote if it's something that deals with their constituency. So anybody that's elected to an office cannot sit on the commission. All right? Uh, brokers for at least five years. Three, two are citizens members. One's a licensed member. All right? Each year, the commission chooses a chairman and a vice chairman to be on, to lead the commission. Each chairman can be a chairman two consecutive terms in a row. Then they must step down. There have been several on the commission that have rotated in several different times. Charles Shook has been the commissioner two or three different times. You know, they go in for a year, or two years, then they step down, let someone else do it for a while, then they come back in, all right? <clears throat> the PLA, remember the PLA, that's the overarching group, gives an executive director to the Real Estate Commission. Right now her name is Deanna Alexander. She is the executive director of the Real Estate Commission. Without being demeaning to Deanna, because I love her to death, think of an executive secretary. She is the one that runs the commission and char has care of all the files, all the applications, all of the stuff that goes on for the commission, and she reports back up to the PLA. So when the PLA has a meeting of all of the licenses, it's the executive director that goes to represent our commission. We don't all go. So there's one executive director for the barbers, one that goes for the boxing commission, one that'll go from the real estate commission. And they have a meeting of the licensees. They tell the executive director, and then she downloads it to the real estate commission. All right? The executive director also cannot sit on the board. So Deanna cannot be one of the 12. She can't vote, and she has no powers other than calling the meetings to order, taking the roll, and then letting the commissioner or the chairman start the meeting and go, and she kind of stays there to make sure everything runs smoothly. Um, if there's any kind of investigations during the commission, and honestly what we should have done is gone on a field trip because... They are meeting currently as we speak. They started today, the 23rd, at 9 a.m. They are meeting right now. I like to go to the commission meetings. They're fun. They're enjoyable. You get to hear what's going on. You get to hear new business. You get to hear people that they are yelling at. <laughs> That's fun sometimes. Um, the, com the meetings are open to the public. They're at the state government building there on Washington Street. You can go in, walk in, and sit in the gallery and watch them have the meeting. So, and they are meeting as we speak right now. The commission meets once a month. They meet in Indianapolis. Or upon the call of any of the seven members. Why seven? How many commissioners are there? Twelve, right? Why do they need seven to call a special meeting? It's, it's a majority. The state defines that as a quorum, by the way. A quorum, meaning they have to have enough of the people there to actually have a meeting. Okay, I'm going to stop this and go to another audio file. <clears throat> 